Welcome to this session of organizational behavior. In this session, we will be talking about the contemporary understanding of uh, work teams uh, in real world scenarios. The primary learning objectives of uh, this session is to better understand the concepts of work teams, um, how it grew into popularity uh, among different organizations. We will contrast between groups and teams. We'll look into different types of teams. And then uh, we will be uh, look deep into the different characteristics of um, the different effectiveness uh, to achieve different effectiveness of teams. And eventually our uh, plan is to look into in an organization how the leaders and the managers should form teams and when they should decide not to form teams and then uh, and some of the challenges and related opportunities with it so when we talk about uh, teams uh, it's uh, before, long before 30, uh, 40 years ago, when in any organizations, uh, in a commercial setting, uh, when in a profit making setting, when we were talking about uh, forming teams, it was very exceptional. But nowadays, when we look into our daily lives, um, in educational settings, uh, in uh, different type of service sectors, certainly um, forming teams uh, for certain uh, uh, managing certain criteria, uh, providing certain services I is the way to go. That's how uh, different organizations are working right now. So, in uh, forming a team, uh, the way the different perks the organization, uh, organ uh, different organizations get is first, uh, uh, it uh, they can ensure that it's they can ensure a better way to ec explore and um, use employees talents uh, and certainly uh, forming teams uh, can ensure better flexibility and uh, responses uh, in different needs uh, with the changing scenarios in the workplace and uh, we can uh, quickly assemble deploy uh, refocus and re uh, disband and rebrand uh, the different goals and objectives and functionalities of teams and uh, our uh, small and big workforces and definitely um, having teams in an organization facilitate uh, better participation uh, in terms of uh, decision making and implementations of those decisions this exhibit talks about the difference between work groups and work teams uh, we we keep hearing about these two terms uh, and sometimes we confuse uh, uh, between these two terms uh, but there are certainly uh, there are some major differences uh, when we talk about um, a goal of uh, a work group uh, it's um, primarily about sharing uh, certain information uh, between different entities uh, and maybe between different uh, teams altogether and then uh, there is usually not necessarily a need or a requirement for any kind of synergy uh, between different work groups or different uh, people different members within the work groups and uh, when we talk about accountability uh, of the work groups uh, uh, certainly it uh, relies uh, relies more on the individual members of certain work groups and it's not a team thing it's not a collective thing and uh, the skill levels of uh, the work groups can vary uh, those uh, can be random depending on um, depending on the uh, the way a certain organization has been uh, developed but when we talk about work teams uh, we see a uh, better structured approach to uh, function first of all the goals and objectives of certain uh, uh, work uh, our deliverables of uh, work teams are certainly collective uh, uh, they have their de they depend on collective performance and those are in many cases uh, within a structure uh, and the synergies of the workforce is uh, certainly uh, encouraged and uh, when we talk about uh, 
the performance accountability of uh, different individuals within a work team um, those are definitely uh, uh, re rely on uh, at a personal level and at the same time accountability is a mutual thing in many cases it's a it's a team thing and the one of the most crucial thing that the managers need to ensure there is that the skill level of the human resources within work teams they certainly needs to be complementary so that we don't have redundancy of one skill over the other and the skills are uh, selected um, in in a way uh, that uh, can definitely ensure better positivity and better synergy and a better performance uh, overall this exhibit 10.2 talks about different types of teams um, here uh, we are talking about uh, problem solving teams self-managed cross-functional teams virtual teams and then we also have this uh, super uh, super team or multi-team uh, uh, so the book um, in many uh, with many examples explains uh, these teams uh, individually first uh, if we look into the example of problem solving team it uh, primarily talking about teams uh, uh, being formed work teams being formed uh, in an ad hoc basis for uh, to solve certain problems uh, the book gives the example of Merrill Lynch where they were trying to come up with a better management uh, system for their uh, uh, Fi better financial management system and uh, they formed a team and they came up with uh, certain solutions some significant uh, solutions with some significant uh, performance improvement but what what is interesting about the problem solving teams are uh, in most cases we have seen that they only can recommend and in many cases they do not have the power uh, or the authority to implement those recommendations that depends on the leadership that depends on other teams or the organizational structure per se uh, when we f uh, then um, give our focus to the self-managed teams uh, these are in many cases uh, micro organizations within themselves um, self-managed teams uh, to some extent uh, the members of the self-managed team uh, are responsible for many of the many of the duties of the managers in a traditional organizations uh, so self-managed teams uh, definitely depend on the complementary skills of their members uh, at the same time uh, uh, they can be uh, very quick uh, very efficient they can cut through the organizational bureaucracy um, and uh, go on and focus on and deliver their own objectives and goals uh, quickly more efficiently at the same time there have been studies uh, and findings that talks about the problems with self-managed teams one of the major thing is if we have uh, uh, lack of coordination and absence of understanding between different team members then definitely there we see a higher level of uh, absenteeism work withdrawals uh, within the self-managed uh, uh, teams so that in many cases uh, are very very uh, negative can have negative impacts uh, the third one in this um, um, exhibit talks about cross-functional teams here we are talking about in in most cases uh, generally we're talking about um, bigger companies uh, they can have uh, footprints in uh, multiple industries or uh, footprints in multiple markets uh, within the region or cross region or across uh, different continents and different countries and in these companies what happens is we are talking about forming uh, work teams with uh, people from different departments with uh, different uh, skill levels uh, at the same time uh, they are at the same organizational uh, same level of the organizational structure and they they are working together and as I have told as I have mentioned before we talk we are talking about the companies where 
this kind of cross functionality is needed this kind of continuity is needed uh, only they only these are the companies who come up with such teams um, the book talks about uh, a product launching of Starbucks where we see that uh, different members uh, of this uh, of at, a, at a, sim a similar organizational level in Starbucks are working together uh, for a, pro a certain product launch which will be launching uh, which will be launched in uh, the US market and in addition to the other different uh, global outlets uh, of Starbucks so th that's the need for them to come up with such a kind of uh, team organization then the fourth one is very interesting the fourth one is a growing one and eventually we will see in our lifetime a uh, huge um, uh, explosion of such a uh, 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 such type of team uh, in the workplace uh, and that's the virtual uh, team uh, or the virtual way of uh, working together uh, in, in any kind offices or any factories or any uh, workplace. So here uh, we are talking about uh, people relying on technology to be connected uh, within themselves and then uh, working on some goals, uh, some common goals. And they are certainly uh, trying to fulfill the, all the criteria we talked about um, in, uh, in our work team's uh, characteristics. But uh, definitely there are some challenges uh, when we are talking about virtual teams. First of all, if it's across uh, different uh, continents, different countries, uh, or even uh, uh, within uh, uh, a certain country, we are talking about uh, from different educational background or different uh, uh, sectors of a certain company, we are, we are seeing, uh, uh, we can see a challenge of uh, the clash in culture. We can see a certain uh, problem uh, with the uh, language uh, in, uh, in communication. When we are talking about dealing with multi-ethnic and multi-national uh, uh, workforce, then definitely language is a huge barrier, accent is a huge barrier uh, or a challenge that people need to uh, overcome virtually. Uh, through a terminal, uh, through different uh, internet-based uh, uh, or and telecommunication-based options. So definitely, um, those are the pitfalls. But ad when we talk about advantage of a, a, a virtual team, uh, there are many. Uh, a primary one is they have low carbon footprint. We are talking about coordination without um, uh, being going through the hassle of travels. So th that certainly uh, is a huge uh, cost saver now the teams are formed the teams can be uh, formed differently we were talking about different team structures uh, in our previous slides but then how we can make sure how the managers can make sure that these teams are managed effectively those teams are um, focused and these teams are look uh, working towards a same uh, their required goals and this is where the book looks into it uh, um, the different factors that can ensure uh, uh, to run uh, an effective team we are talking about this exhibit 10.3 talks about the context the composition and processes, uh, different processes to ensure uh, the team effectiveness. But we certainly need to make sure that uh, we, we, we need to consider that the teams, different teams uh, can differ in uh, forms and structures. So this model in the book uh, attempts to generalize across all types of teams. But at the same time, things can differ from team to team. And the second one is uh, the thing that we need to uh, understand is this model that uh, the writers proposed uh, assumes that the teamwork is preferable to individual work. So that's the assumption. But as we will see in the later part of this lecture that uh, in many cases uh, teamworks are not preferable or not the most optimal choice um, over an individual assignment. 
if we uh, first uh, look into the context factors um, in the previously mentioned exhibit, um, so that usually talks about deals with the uh, factors that uh, determine uh, what are, whether the teams will be successful or not. And the first uh, most important thing is um, adequate resources. Definitely, uh, the organizations, when they are forming different teams, they need to make sure that there are adequate resources to ensure uh, the functionality and successes of the team members and the team itself. And uh, related to that, resource allocation comes the role of the leaders and the how the organizations and the teams within are structured. The leaders and the, uh, and the managers who are in the leading position, they certainly need to make sure that um, there is a transparent and structured way of achieving certain goals and those are communicated properly uh, among the different team members and there is no uh, tension or inconceived environment uh, uh, within, the working, uh, in, uh, within the working structure of a certain team. And that leads to the issue of climate of trust. Uh, certainly, the people uh, within a team, the members within a team, needs to trust each other. Uh, they certainly need to make sure. They certainly need to make sure that they do not consider each other as a competitor in a negative way. And um, they also need to believe that. Um, working together as a team can help them to achieve something great, uh, something positive for them and for the organization they're working for. And uh, when people are working like this in a team, certainly performance evaluations and the uh, rewards uh, that follows uh, need, to be, uh, need to be done accordingly and adequately. Uh, we and that can be a bit tricky because uh, w we are talking about uh, organizationals, uh, different organizations uh, who are used to evaluate and uh, reward people individually. But here, when the team performance comes in, uh, it's 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 very important for the organizations to also look into. Uh, the different performance of the teams or the collective performance and uh, then uh, evaluate them and reward them accordingly. When we talk about composing team after making sure the context is right, the resources are allocated uh, and the performance analysis uh, and the performance uh, based uh, incentives uh, will be transparent. Now we are looking for the composition of the team. Uh, definitely, uh, how should the team be staffed or how many members need to be there depends on that certain task which is at hand. Uh, and definitely when we are looking for uh, recruiting members for a team, the abilities of the team members uh, is going to be the primary criteria. Uh, we are certainly looking for uh, certainly looking for a good match between the primary goal uh, that needs to be achieved, uh, the primary product that needs to be uh, produced, uh, or the primary service that needs to be uh, ensured. And then we look for the members who can complement each other and can ensure synergy to achieve those goals. Uh, we in the previous lectures, we talked about uh, different personalities of different people in, and how can it motivate or uh, in many cases uh, negate uh, the certain work motivations in a workplace. Uh, so definitely we should look for people with the personality who can w be conducive to work together, who are open to collective ideas at the same time who can be creative when while they're working together so those are the factors definitely we need to look into and then uh, is just uh, recruiting uh, certain peoples are not enough we also need to make sure that the leadership uh, in the context part what we, we are talking about the leadership certainly need to make sure that the team members have been allocated the effective roles and when we are recruiting people 
uh, with uh, certain good uh, and required personalities, uh, these also will make sure that uh, we have diversity uh, within our workforce, within the team members. And uh, definitely it's needed. But at the same time, uh, as we have mentioned in our diversity chapter, that it's, it's certainly uh, we need to be smart in ensuring uh, and applying uh, the level of diversity we want within a workforce in a team because uh, imagine if uh, something is a physical strength related work uh, we need to make sure the team members have complementary physical strength to achieve the goal if we just to make sure that the team is diverse if we uh, come up with uh, a lot of people with high uh, emotional intelligence but less and less uh, uh, physical strength then suddenly uh, the team will be diverse but won't be effective so these are su su some of the things we we should uh, we should look this exhibit talks about the key roles uh, the different uh, members play uh, within a certain team uh, we are talking about the creators who come up with the uh, initial creative ideas. Then we have the promoters who promote it. Then we have the assessment people then who are organizing it and who are enforcing those uh, ideas, those changes. And in many cases, we also have the linkers who coordinate between different ingredients or with different other teams and advise, advise uh, people who are in the advising role and maintaining role who are uh, dealing with uh, the outside elements at the same time encourage uh, the search for more information and more ideas if we remember the final category related to team effectiveness uh, we will see that it's uh, we w we talked about different process variables um, for example such as um, member commitment to a common purpose establishment of specific team goals team efficacy uh, uh, we, we also kind of talked about con conflict uh, or the confusions between uh, or the tensions between different team members. So these are all uh, different process variables within a certain team. And uh, there will be specially these will be specially important. Uh, to look into if we are dealing with larger teams, uh, teams with uh, diverse cultures, teams with, uh, uh, who are highly interdependent, who are big in numbers. So then these processes becomes more and more crucial. So what happens in a real life scenario, uh, th we see ideally um, in pen and paper, um, there are certain potential of the group's effectiveness. We manage them, we hired them, we ensure there are certain transparencies, and we are also giving them incentives. Um, and, but then what happens is we will see in the real life there can be some process losses uh, due to different cultural issues, different real world unforeseen issues. And that's how eventually we can come up with after taking all these into uh, uh, consideration, we will see the actual group e e effectiveness. And that's a more practical way of perceiving a uh, certain effectiveness of um, any group. So the team process begins with a common plan and purpose. We were talking about different uh, criteria of team process in uh, previous slides. Any effective team uh, begin uh, by analyzing the team's mission. Uh, then it develops goals to achieve that mission and then create strategies for achieving the goals. Uh, teams that establish a clear sense of what needs to be done and how they should consistently perform better uh, are the ones who have the better hand. Uh, effective uh, teams definitely show reflexivity, uh, which means that they reflect on uh, certain issues that they face and adjust their master plan accordingly. And then definitely there, there are uh, importance of specific goals. We also need to make sure that the teams uh, 
uh, effective teams have the confidence in themselves and believe that they can succeed that's uh, is that is defined as team efficacy in the book and uh, the other thing that's important uh, and which is highlighted here is uh, the team members should share similar mental models they should have uh, they should be on the same page in terms of what needs to be achieved and what are the things they're getting out of this task and what are their uh, primary roles in in order to achieve that task if we see that the team members um, the and the leaders within a certain team are not in a same mental model uh, then definitely there can be uh, serious issues serious challenges and underperformance uh, uh, or lack of uh, results within a certain team and then it can uh, also result in a different kind of conflicts uh, and then it can also uh, result in um, different kind of social loafing where we'll see high rate of work withdrawals absenteeism and other negative uh, factors to emerge so how should we create uh, team players uh, how should we make sure that uh, we have better uh, citizenship within the members of a certain team uh, definitely we talked about um, how we can analyze people's personality and uh, how people are motivated and how people uh, are war how people work uh, in a real life uh, work scenario uh, in in our previous sessions uh, and definitely we need to identify we need to apply those uh, uh, methods to hire uh, team members uh, to make sure that uh, they are not loners they are not just efficient working alone so in in accordance with the goal and the objective of our, our, of our team or within an organization definitely effective more uh, more effective people should be hired but then saying this not always it's easy to have all the ready-made products uh, uh, products in terms of all the ready-made members who can come within a certain team and can uh, perform from the get-go uh, definitely there are scopes for uh, human resource development and this is where uh, organizational scaffolding comes into play uh, the managers need to make sure that there are enough training uh, to uh, given to the new recruits who are on board new team members who are uh, just uh, joining the team and so that they can be attuned with uh, the common culture and they can be uh, in sync with the similar mental models of the organizations and the certain goals and the objectives the team need to achieve and perform and then when we are talking about uh, giving them training or and hiring uh, certain people definitely uh, incentives need to be provided in a very effective way uh, certainly rewards should be given in a way that um, uh, that can encourage uh, team members performance and uh, while doing this we should consider both extrinsic and intrinsic uh, rewarding system and compensation systems In many cases, uh, when we are looking for different uh, trends in organizational behavior, uh, what we see that many organizations uh, just uh, go with the flow and seeing that everybody, all the peer organizations are looking uh, to implement team-based performances uh, or team-based assignments, uh, everybody start uh, forming teams. And then, in many cases, we forget to ask some critical questions uh, while forming the teams. We sometimes do not ask ourselves, can this work that we are doing by team could be done better by one person? Uh, does the work that we are assigning create a common goal or purpose? And uh, in many cases, when we are forming a team, we should also ask 
are the members of this group that we just created are interdependent or independent uh, so th these in many cases are the litmus test uh, to better understand uh, the relevance of uh, having a team or not in many cases we will be seeing uh, that uh, it's better to assign it to individuals uh, with certain skill levels then we can definitely save cost save um, a lot of time uh, and uh, in many cases will uh, uh, save a lot of uh, organizational resources and come up with a better product so definitely not always uh, having teams and implementing team based ideas uh, is a good option summing it all up why it matters for managers uh, definitely uh, teams are important uh, when it's needed and in order to ensure effective team is is of course the responsibility of the managers um, so um, the managers need to make sure that adequate uh, adequate resources are there effective leadership is there and people are trusting each other um, when they are performing at the same time when they're being evaluated uh, so they have the faith in the rewarding system of the organization they are working for and uh, when we are talking about hiring certain people within a team uh, we, we should look for the technical expertise that's important to achieve the goal at hand for the team and uh, members definitely need to be provided with freedom and flexibility and uh, the opportunity to have the ownership of their own work within certain teams and also the opportunity to uh, learn from each other in a, in, a, in a team environment that definitely that kind of synergy definitely can uh, uh, result in better productivity and definitely the people who are working in a team managers and the other uh, team members alike certainly needs to share a common mental model they need to be on the same page uh, in terms of their given um, assignments uh, about their synergistic uh, opportunities for better performance and also to know about uh, what are the goals and objectives they need to achieve. Um, and those uh, shared mental model scenario definitely can help to avoid different kinds of conflict or tensions that can grow uh, between different team members and to conclude the management definitely needs to try to select individuals who have uh, for uh, for the team uh, who have the interpersonal skills to be effective team players and uh, definitely the the organization the managers need to make sure that there is enough training to develop the teamwork skills and incentive and they should provide the incentives that can commensurate uh, their cooperative approach uh, towards achieving these uh, common goals that's pretty much it for um, better knowledge and uh, to look further deep into different examples certainly the chap book chapter 10 of the book uh, needs to be consulted thank you so much